Outdoors Del Marva covers everything outdoors. Including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We do our best each and every week to keep it tasteful, but discretion is advised. Now, enjoy the show. This is Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Coming up this week on the show, we've got the whole story behind this beautiful alligator found in an eastern shore retention pond. We'll show you what he's been through and where he's going. Plus, archery hunters may already be out in the woods, but it's a long season and we're still gearing up. Captain Willie checks in with the experts for some archery options. And it's a watercraft design with the sportsman in mind. We'll head out on the water to try out one of these new G3 aluminum boats. Woohoo! Right now on Outdoors Del Marva. This is Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. And now, here's Mike Parker. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. Captain Willie Dykes will be stopping by in just a few minutes. Well, folks, as we begin this week's show, we're taking a little bit of a road trip. Yeah, we're on the tail of a story that began a few weeks ago in Wicomico County, but now takes us about two and a half hours to the west here in Westminster, Maryland, in Carroll County. And I'm standing outside right now to Feathers, Scales, and Tails Veterinary Hospital here in Westminster, a place that you could say tends to specialize in the more exotic types of pets and critters from time to time. So when an alligator turned up in a retention pond in Fruitland, well, the folks here are standing by ready to help. The day, September 5th, 2012. The location a retention pond in Fruitland, Maryland. What you're looking at is video taken as the suspected imposter enjoys his final moments of freedom just beneath the water surface. And while this five foot long American alligator settles into protective custody, Needless to say, for police, it hasn't been your typical day. Not, uh, not the normal day's work, but sure. Then again, for one officer... You know, there is no such thing as a normal day. <laughs> for Salisbury Police Department Animal Control Officer David Shanks, today's puzzle is one for the dogs. Maybe the safest thing to do is put something down here and let these guys climb on out. Now, if you remember from the video just a minute ago, Officer Shanks was there, called in to help catch the alligator. But when we catch up with him on this morning, it's in response to the four dogs that have ventured inside a deep Salisbury retention pond area and can't seem to find their way back over the wall and creating a disturbance in the neighborhood. Being careful not to harm the pets, Officer Shanks first snares one dog as gently as possible around its neck and maneuvers it into a waiting cage. Putting another cage into place as a step, the rest of the pack soon figures it all out and escapes to higher ground. With the dog safe, their owner will be located and notified and reunited with his pets, but not before paying some fines. So when word that an alligator of all things had been spotted by a construction crew in Fruitland, the stakeout began. And the crew, including Officer Shanks, Maryland DNR, and local police, form a perimeter, armed only with the same type of capture snares used on the runaway dogs. Now watch again, when in an opportunistic moment, Fruitland Police Chief Mike Phillips spots the gator and makes his move. being evasive which was which was hard for us and uh, we just got a lucky chance to get at it and it happened to be on my side so how did an alligator end up in the maryland wild well it's safe to say a person brought him here how we may never know for sure but the gator likely an overgrown pet was likely abandoned when its owner could no longer care for it maryland by law prohibits people from owning alligators but some other states don't and American alligators and other exotic pets are readily bought, sold, and even shipped from online traders. 
So why not just dispatch him? Why go ahead and uh, catch a lot? Well, I, I'd rather see him go to a rescue than, than put him down unnecessarily. I mean, it, it's probably someone's pet or started out that way. Um, so uh, I think that'd be the better thing to do. So what's next for the alligator who made a temporary home on Delmarva? A little road trip was all we needed to find out. I'm going to call a place called Scales and Tails, see if they'll take him. So after this alligator found a temporary refuge here at the Feathers, Tails and Scales Veterinary Clinic in Westminster, it quickly found a more permanent home too. Let's find out where he's going. And to tell us, joining us right now is Bonnie Kellerhouse with the Tri-State Zoological Park. Hey Bonnie, how are you? I'm good, thank you. All right, well, I see you have your hands full. I do. <laughs> tell us about your new friend. This is an American alligator. It is a male. And he is approximately about five foot in length, which means he is probably about five to six years old. Wow, wow. So this was a big surprise for people over in Fruitland, Maryland, back in our stomping grounds when this turned up in a retention pond. What's your guess? We may never know, but what do you think might have happened here? Well, unfortunately, people get these reptiles from reptile shows and they get too big and don't know how to handle them, so they end up in our care. Unfortunately, some of them end up dead. So the only thing is we can, you know, be very thankful that he was found because um, come December, he wouldn't have survived out in the water here. Now that he's moving to your zoo, first of all, tell us where the zoo is, where's your facility located, and what he'll be surrounded with when he gets there. The uh, zoo is actually located in Cumberland, Maryland, and it's called the Tri-State Zoological Park. We have a lot of different types of animals out there. We are an exotic rescue, so um, he will be joining uh, about seven, seven other gators. So he should be very happy. Well, Bonnie, because you think that this alligator might have come from being a pet and having been in captivity before and been around people, it's used to being handled. So you think it's okay if I give it a try? Sure. All right, now what's the best approach here? If you take your hand over here and just run it under the front, mm -hmm. and then your back hand under the tail, and hold it close to your side, he should be just fine. Oh, yeah. He seems like he's pretty at ease with yes. me. Just cool to the touch, very soft. You know, people who aren't familiar with reptiles, they can be a little intimidating. So spending some time with you, Bonnie, and showing me how to carefully hold this alligator here has been a real pleasure. Why, thank you. Now to check out the fine work being done by our friends here at Feathers, Tails, and Scales Veterinary Clinic, as well as the Tri-State Zoological Park, uh, we've posted links to both of their websites on the Outdoors Delmarva Facebook page. See what they're up to, and maybe plan a visit of your own. And we'll be right back. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, Bow hunters are already out in the woods, but there's still plenty of time to gear up. Captain Willie returns with some archery options. But first, did you know? In their natural habitat, alligators bear young by laying eggs. And while gators themselves are on top of the food chain, their eggs are vulnerable to a number of different animals. What is the top predator of alligator eggs? The answer, when we come back. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Ocean City Tourism. Shorts Marine. Mother Nature's Velcro, everyone. Shooter's Choice. And Goody's Marine. That's funny. Outdoors Del Marvo so, will be right back. What did you do today at work? <laughs> Let me it spring stuck up. a possum on my head. Did you know? Alligators themselves might be on top of the food chain, but their eggs are vulnerable to a number of predators. At the top of the list, the common raccoon. Did you know is sponsored by North Bay Marina. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. If you tuned in last week, you saw part one of our three part series, All Things Bow, where we showed you what you needed to do to tune up that dusty old bow. Well, this week, we're back with our friend Kelly Ross to compare the different types of bows that are popular here on Del Marva so you can choose which outfit is right for you. 
Okay, Kelly, it looks like we have a chance to take a few shots with each of the three types of bows. We want to take a look at the penetration and at the size of groupings that we can get with each type. We're going to use your recurve, a traditional bow. Then we're going to move up to a compound and then the crossbow. This is a 15 yard range in here. Typically what I would expect from the average recurve shooter is a pie plate size group. Something in that like 8 to 10 inch range. When we go to the compound, you're going to watch the group size go down from paper plate down to each arrow will probably be touching each other. Whoa. And then ultimately when we go to the crossbow, you will see same hole repeatability. Uh, penetration goes up as we go up with each piece of technology. Whoa. <laughs> this has got to be a little better here. Can't be any worse. paper that time. Anyway. <laughs> if you mark the type of penetration that he's getting out of this bow, you're going to be able to see the difference. We're probably like four to five inches every time with a traditional bow. Hmm. Now do you use the same uh, length of arrows in a uh, compound that you would in a recurve? No you wouldn't. Uh, when you go to the compound it has to be fitted to the individual. No two people are going to shoot the same exact draw length or weight. By using a mechanical release aid today, it fires just like a gun. We draw back, and then I am just squeezing a trigger. So the consistency is much greater with a mechanical release as opposed to using your fingers. As you can see, the consistency is a lot tighter. You know, it said we would probably shoot somewhere around an inch and a half group, and these three are all you know, touching each other. This one is slightly out, whether it deflected off of here or if it's just me moving, probably. But watch the difference in penetration when we go to pull these out of the, the wall. Right there, and I said we would probably be a little closer yeah. to 10 inches. Yep. We're gonna get Willie into a crossbow now. Um, when it comes to repeatability, I can virtually guarantee same hole repeatability out to 30 yards using a bench rest. Uh, speed's going to come up. We're going to be looking somewhere in the 330 feet per second with about 110 foot pounds of energy. This is going to get it done. That's the bottom line. It's going to look through the scope. There's three crosshairs in there. You start with the top crosshair. That's your closest distance. And just a smooth, steady squeeze on that trigger. Look at that. That's as closely as you can get them together without. Uh, Pulling a Robin Hood. <laughs> also, look at the difference in penetration. As we stated before, the recurve only got about five inches. We went to about 10 inches on the compound. Now we're driving them in there, you know, probably a healthy 15 plus. Ah, if, if you can even pull them out. <laughs> Need some help there? Yeah, I got it. There's a, about two thirds the distance of the bolt is going in. Next week on part three of our series, we'll show you the different types of arrows that are available for your bow system and go through the steps that'll keep you on target for the season. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, you won't want to miss this week's Scorchies Corner Classic. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. A boat is just about a must for good sod fishing. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Coming up on the next episode of Outdoors Delmarva. I am currently enjoying Ocean City's highest ride. <laughs> yeah, there's life after Labor Day here when we go parasailing. And now, it's time to check in with an old friend. Here's this week's Scorchy's Corner Classic. This week we went sod fishing in the company of Dale Timmons, Herb Wirtz, and Tim Taws. What is sod fishing? Well, sort of like surf fishing without sand. What were we sod fishing for? It must have been bluefish. That's what we caught. Although we were hoping one of those incidental fish would swim by, 
like maybe a red drum. There's really lots of sport inside fishing. If you like to catch big blues in placid water of only three to four feet deep, side fishing could easily invade your blood. We've found side fishing best in the spring and fall, sort of like Hatteras, and cut fish like mullet, menhaden, and spot the best bait. A boat is just about a must for good side fishing. The Shutterbug, our 24-foot grady, looks like she's high and dry here, but she's actually in a little cutout in a tiny island, one of several places we nestled into during the course of the day in Tangier and Pocomoke Oak Sounds. No, this wasn't utopian fishing. We had plenty of slow moments. On the other hand, side fishing can at times become rather spirited. Tawes, wandering our Del Marvelous land for WBOC News. If you've got an upcoming adventure here on Del Marva or beyond, we want to see it. Get outdoors, Del Marva! Whether it's a fishing or hunting trip or going camping or hiking with a community group or friends, get outdoors, Del Marva! <laughs> let us know, and we can put the viewer venture cam in your hands. Got an idea? Email Mike at mparker at wboc.com. It's the Outdoors Del Marva Viewer Venture Cam. You shoot it, we'll show it. Uh, three, hit that red button. Then just hit the red button and stop. Get Outdoors Del Marva! Perfect. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, we're headed out on the water to check out a line of boats designed with the sportsman in mind. And later, your latest viewer videos and pictures. Outdoors Del Marva viewer pictures are sponsored by Shorts Marine. This is Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker, and we're back here again with our friends from. Goody's Marine, conveniently located here just a short drive outside of Cambridge, Maryland, fishing boats from fishing folks. And joining us once again is our friend Tommy Goody with Goody's Marine. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Mike. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having us up here again. Always enjoy this beautiful drive through Dorchester County. Well, you know, last time we were here, really exciting. You introduced us to a new brand of boats that you guys are carrying, the G3 line of aluminum boats. And one thing I'm noticing is since we were here last, you have a lot of new models in. Tell me about them. Yes, sir. What you got, you got something for everybody. You can start with a boat like this. It's just plain open boat with a floor in it and a side console for the guy that just wants the boat all open or nothing in his way. Or you can step up something like this. It's got the center console, it's got the live wells. This boat's for the guy that wants a little bit of everything in the boat. He can do it, use it for hunting, fishing, cruising around, anything he wants to do with it. Well, Tommy, one of the features that's catching my eye right away is on this model. I mean, check out this beautiful camo, functional, and it looks great too. Yeah, the great thing about the camo, this is for the guy that wants to take it to the next level. Boy, let me tell you, they didn't forget a thing. Take a look at this side console, all decked out in camo, even the seats. Okay, Mike, I know you've been out in these boats with the round chines on them, how they're kind oh, of yeah, back oh, yeah, they're not real stable in the water. Well, one of the great things about this new model we just brought in, it's got the V-Haul, but it also has that reverse chine which is gonna make this boat very stable in the water. Tommy, I'm impressed with what I've seen so far out of these G3s, but we can talk about them all we want. I say we take one out on the water. What do you think? Let's go. So here we go. We're here with Henry Goody right now, cruising on this G3 V177. Got 60 horses of Yamaha four-stroke power, taking us down the Honga River. Henry, where are we headed? We're heading out to a booby blind or offshore blind to show you that this boat can handle the river blinds and the uh, shore blinds as well. Here we are, Mike. What do you think now? Well, I'll tell you what, Henry, this is awesome. I can picture it right now, the perfect fall or winter morning. Pull up here in the G3. It fits perfectly, blends right in, sit down in the blind, wait for the birds. Boom, we're in business. I'll tell you what, you goody boys, you never disappoint. Henry, Tommy, thanks for having me out. I'm super impressed with this G3 line of aluminum boats. 
Yep, now's the time to come on down. Let us make a deal for you. We've got plenty of boats in stock. We'll fix you up. All right, sounds like a plan. Thanks, Tommy. Well, if you're looking for that perfect boat tailored for the sportsman to get you out and enjoy the water in every season, check out the G3 line of boats with our friends at Goody's Marine. Fishing and hunting boats from fishing and hunting folks. And we'll be right back. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, your latest viewer videos and pictures. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. This is Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Ocean City Tourism. Shorts Marine. Shooter's Choice, and Goody's Marine. It's time now to take a look at some of the pictures and videos sent in by our own Outdoors Del Marva viewers. Well, those early season Canada goose hunters did pretty good over the past few weeks. Pictured here from right to left are Danny Wynn, Reed Pulaskin, John Wynn, Harry Mowry, James Wynn, and Michael Uremia. Nice shooting, fellas, after a day on a farm near Salisbury. Sarah Savage from Bishopville is only 12 years old, but she's already proving to be an offshore adventurer with her latest catch. This nice white marlin was one of two she caught recently aboard the Pullen Tidal out of Ocean City, Maryland. Her very proud dad, Scott, is pictured on the right. Steve Long from Bishopville knows the meaning of a butterfly bush. Check out the flurry of tiger swallowtails hanging around. Beautiful. Matt Walls from Bethany Beach has been keeping an eye on the whitetails for us. I'd say he's got a nice group of small bucks, a doe, and a fawn frequenting his backyard. And great picture. Jay Hastings from Seaford took a trip north recently to Maine. Check it out. He harvested this 200-pound black bear. It's Jay's third bear taken in the state of Maine. And while we don't have this species on Delmarva anymore, it's good to know that our local hunters are still tracking them down. And Peggy Salisbury from Bridgeville posted this picture to the Outdoors Delmarva Facebook page. Looks like this guy is all smiles after a successful dove hunt. Until next time, for my buddy Mike Parker, I'm Captain Willie Dykes reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva.